afternoon, members. We have already reached the scheduled time to start our meeting. We have also formed a quorum, so I call the meeting to order. Item 1, confirmation of minutes of meeting. Minutes of the first meeting held on the 12th of October 2018. So far, no comments have been received from members. I would like to invite you to confirm the minutes. No objection. Minutes confirmed. Item 2. Matters arising. Report by the Chairman on her re meeting with the Chief Secretary for Administration. I haven't got anything special to report to you. Item 3. Legal Service Division report on subsidiary legislation gazetted on the 12th of October 2018. I would like to invite the legal advisor to walk us through the paper briefly. Paper LS4, 18-19. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, the paper covers two items of subsidiary legislation, and they are Legal Notice 171 and LN172. And this follows the grant of the second 10-year operating right of the Peak, Tram, uh, Peak Tramway to the Peak Tramways Company Limited. First of all, for the first legal notice, this is to um, raise the number, this is to increase the maximum number of uh, passengers that a tram car may carry from 120 to 210. It comes into operation on a date to be appointed by the Secretary by notice published in the Gazette. For the second one, currently a uh, we are seeing that a particular uh, piece of land will be taken out from the original plan so that it won't uh, form part of the tramway. And for the next step, for this particular area which ceases to form part of the tramway area, um, this will be granted to the PTC by way of a land lease uh, together with other areas so as to tie in with the expansion of the terminus. Uh, this will come into operation on the 31st of December 2018. On the 25th of June 2018, um, the Panel on Economic Development was uh, consulted. Members generally supported um, the uh, project and in support of the relevant uh, proposed amendments. Um, any member wishing to set up a subcommittee? Dr. K. Kwok, anybody wishing to join? Mr. Tung Li Chair, Cloud, please circulate paper to find out who's interested. In relation to the subsidiary legislation I've mentioned, amendments, uh, if you wish to make, uh, are to be made by council meeting of the 21st of November or that of the 12th of December if extended by resolution. Item 4. Further business for the Council meeting of the 24th of October 2018, a tabling of papers. Report number 2 slash 18 to 19 of the House Committee on Consideration of Subsidiary Legislation and Other Instruments. The report covers 11 items of subsidiary legislation, uh, the period for amendment of which will expire at the Council meeting of 24th of October. No member has indicated their wish to speak on them. B. Members' motions. First of all, motion under Article 73, bracket 5 and bracket 10 of the Basic Law of the Hong Kong SAR of the People's Republic of China to be moved by Honorable Claudia Mo. The wording of the motion has been issued by paper, uh, an LC paper dated the 15th of October 2018. B. Uh, motion under Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance to be moved by Honorable Lam Chak Ting. The wording has been sent out to members. At the last House Committee meeting on the 12th of October, members noted that Honourable Claudia Mo will move a motion under Legislative Powers and Privileges Ordinance at the Council meeting of the 24th of October. As the subject matter of both Honourable uh, Claudia Mo's and Honourable Lam Chak Ting's motions is concerned about the construction works of the Sha Tin to Central Link, the President has directed that a joint debate be held on the two motions and then they be voted upon one by one. The relevant debate and voting arrangements have already been sent out to members via a legal paper. Item 5, business for the council meeting of the 31st of October 2018. A questions. 22 written 22 questions have been scheduled for the meeting, 6 oral questions and uh, 16 written questions. B. Bills, first reading and moving of second reading. 
first supplementary appropriation 2017-2018 bill, second Indian Revenue Amendment number no. 6 bill 2018. The House Committee will deal with the two bills at its meeting on the 2nd of November. C. Government motion. No notice has been received yet. D. Members motions. First of all, motion to be moved by Honourable Jeremy Tam. That's about legislating for the protection of whistleblowers. Uh, second, motion to be moved by Honourable Mrs. Regina Yip, studying the enactment of an ordinance on regulating subdivided units. The deadline for giving notice of amendments, if you would like to move amendments, will expire on the 24th of October, Wednesday. Item 6, Reports of Bills Committees and Subcommittees. Report of the Bills Committee on Private Health Care Facilities Bill. I would like to invite Mr. Ben Chen, Chairman of the Bills Committee, to report and speak. Madam Chairman, members generally support the objective of the bill, which seeks to replace the current regulatory framework under the outdated Hospitals, Nursing Homes and Maternity Homes Registration Ordinance and the Medical Clinics Ordinance, CAP 165 and CAP 343 respectively, with a new regulatory mechanism covering four types of private health care facilities, namely hospitals, day procedure centres, clinics and health services establishments. Members were particularly concerned about the types of private health care facilities subject to regulation, how the scope of the premises of licensed facility is to be defined, whether patients will get adequate compensation for the negligence of private health care facilities in a medical or dental incident, appointment of a chief medical executive to take charge of the day-to-day day administration of the facility concerned, measures to enhance the price transparency of private hospitals, the composition and functions of the Committee on Complaints Against Private Health Care Facilities, as well as the timetable to fully implement the new regulatory system. Having considered the views of the Bills Committee, the administration will move a number of amendments to the bill. The details are set out in our written report. The Bills Committee does not object to the proposed amendments. It will not move any other amendments to the bill. The Bills Committee raises no objection to the resumption of the second reading debate on the bill. The administration has informed the Bills Committee of its intention to resume the second reading debate on the bill at the Legislative meeting of the 31st of October 2018. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Members, if you would like to move any amendments, the deadline for giving notice will expire on the 22nd of October, Monday. Item 7, Position on Bills Committees and Subcommittees. As of the 18th of October, 10 Bills Committees are in action. In addition, 10 subcommittees under the House Committee, 4 subcommittees on policy issues under panels, on the waiting list, I have got nine subcommittees on policy issues under panels. Item 8, any other business. Proposal of Honourable Gary Fan to seek a House Committee's agreement for asking an urgent oral question. At the Council meeting of the 24th of October 2018 on matters relating to the signalling f- failure that occurred on four MTR lines on the 16th of October 2018, in the afternoon of the 16th of October, Mr. Gary Fenn wrote to me asking for this item to be included in our discussion at a House Committee meeting. Um, he has already uh, passed the deadline for today's agenda, that is the 15th of October. But then, having considered the fact that his proposal is to raise an urgent oral question at the meeting held next week, and in line with our uh, usual practice, that is where practicable, we should allow a discussion at the House Committee in relation to a proposal by member to ask an urgent question. Therefore, I've included uh, this uh, topic in today's agenda so that he can convince us as to why it is an urgent question. How many members would like to speak? Please press the button to speak so that we can sort of um, manage our time. Yes, Mr. Fan. How much time do I have? Four minutes? One minute. One minute. On the 16th of October in the morning, four lines of the MTR um, 
had service disruption, two million commuters were affected. I think it's a matter of notification, contingency measures, and prevention of incidents are all at stake. This is because for the um, signaling system of Chun Wan Line, it is undergoing upgrading exercise. Now, in the future, all the other HMTR lines will also undergo the uh, same uh, works, that is, upgrading of the signaling system. So it is a matter of huge public interest. It is also urgent. Therefore, I would like to seek the HC's uh, agreement so that I will be given permission to ask an urgent question at the LC meeting on the 24th of October without notice, asking for the administration to give an account. First of all, the MTRC didn't um, inform the TD in eight minutes and then send out a red alert in 20 minutes. They failed to do so. And what can we do to prevent something similar from happening again? I would like to get views from members. Twelve members have indicated the wish to ask questions, so I will call you one by one. Please uh, press the button to speak as soon as possible, because we need to bear in mind that the FC is going to have a meeting after us. Dr. Helena Wong, Madam Chair, we do support the idea of asking an urgent oral question. Well, since Mr. Andrew Leung has become the president of the LegCo in the current term. Seldom have we got the permission to ask urgent oral questions, quite unlike Jasper Zhang. So it seems that um, it has been sort of suspended. I really hope that the president will respect our wish to ask urgent questions. Well, this is a, a very important issue. This is about the MTR service. Um, previously, when we were hit by Mankert, uh, of course, there was only the East Rail one line only that was uh, brought to a halt. But on this occasion, all four of them uh, came to a halt. Now, we were told about the um, cross of the matter being the signaling system. Uh, is there an interface problem between the existing one and the new one concerning the signaling systems? We're supposed to be innovative. Now, how come that our signaling systems are so obsolete? Dr. Enjang, well, we have been gravely disappointed by the MTR on this occasion. Well, in fact, uh, the traffic was uh, paralyzed uh, during um, the banquet. Now, four lines uh, have collapsed. I think we really need to review what went wrong. Now, if uh, only Mr. Fan uh, is to be allowed to ask an urgent question, and then the total time given would at most be 20 minutes or so, and probably only a few members could ask supplementary questions. Why don't we have a two-hour meeting of the transport panel? Um, I asked Mr. Ben Chen, chairman of the transport panel, to call a meeting ASAP and summon the transport um, officials to appear before us. Mr. Chen said that uh, he would consider that. And in fact, in the upcoming subcommittee on railways, there would be four hours for the discussion about the collapse or, or the suspension of service of the four uh, railway lines. Mr. Elvin Young, since uh, Mr. Leung uh, became the president, few of us have got the experience of asking urgent questions. We don't even know what it is about. Now, in fact, the purpose is not to ask any ordinary oral question. In fact, it is to give us an opportunity to put questions to the relevant officials at a legal meeting. I don't think we don't have to talk more about the impact on the commuters. I think the pro-establishment camp members um, know about the impact, both your constituents as well as yourselves. So I think we should uh, have unanimous support so that Mr. Fan be allowed to ask his oral question. In a moment, when we put the matter to the vote, we should set aside our political differences and we should all support Mr. Fan. Dr. K.K. Kwok, I support Mr. Gary Fenn's proposal. Well, for urgent oral questions, it seems that we haven't had them for a long time. So um, I think Dr. N. Zhang should uh, take part in a quiz about electrical business. Now, if more 
more than one member would like to ask urgent questions. In the past, the president would allow all members to finish with their questions. For the current uh, on incumbent president, he has never given permission, not even for once. So we don't know what he will do. Now, this is something really, really important. We have lost our confidence in the MTR. We don't know how many more problems we're going to get when they test run the new signaling system. So we really hope that uh, we can uh, be given time to ask urgent oral questions, to ask for an explanation. Claudia Mo, I would like to uh, remind that Angelia had never approved any um, or questioning. Maybe he was he would think take pride in that. He never approved it for once. But is that this shouldn't be how the electrical business is run. That morning there's like a tens of thousands of uh, people trying to work. You're worried about it would be the next episode of the typhoon manga. However there's no typhoon. So the night before the MTR conducting testing on the signal system and the morning before dawn, it discovered that you can't switch back to the old system and claim they couldn't get the relevant information so it may as well um, halt everything and operate manually. And even uh, almost the entire city's traffic had come to a st standstill. So Hong Kong people worried that when will be the next time. It's just oral questions. Just to give, let them have, uh, give it cl come clean for just for once. Mr. Kuang Chen Yu, so and and Chang, do you show her concern? So as you we make you have uh, to have a two hour meeting at a traffic panel. There's no conflict in that. This morning we wrote to Ben Chen. She's just next to you. you. Can just ask him right away. So let we have an urgent question first, and and then we have a special meeting and other panels so on. So we, so before us, a lot of the citizens have been very frustrated. So what was really going on? What happened? Well, uh, the uh, signal system was what happened to notification mechanism. So if we carry on uh, simultaneously, that's all right. So in that, well, we can go on parallel ways. First, I just want to appeal t to Ms. Chang that we can have it concurrently. Well, he's just sitting next to you. I believe that uh, Mr. Ben Chen can respond to the public concern. He can At least we can set a direction on that. I suppose that we we can and have it in both ways, Mr. Mr. Ray Chen. So, what do we define by urgent? Besides the nature calls, um, the rush to work is considered top priority to Hong Kong people. And since Angela had never approved any urgent questioning, thus the members forgot um how should it be applied. Like N Chang said, that only the person who Ask the question can ha have a 10 minute slot. It's not that. It's also open the floor to other members. According to Jasper Chang, whoever pressed the button, let's say if all 60 of us pressed the button, they will let everyone have the turn before wrapping up the questioning round. And this time should allow the tra more sufficient more time than the transport panel. That's why I don't understand why the members are so nervous about it, but don't think it's appropriate to have urgent questioning on Wednesday because it's been too long that we haven't. And use or questioning. I hope that the transport departments to retract the statement we claim is not catastrophic. How do you find catastrophe? Does it have a cat fatality to to classify as a uh, catastrophe, Mr. Edichu? So looking at the past papers in 2016-17, the administration had come to Lechko twice and claims that the MTR is testing its new system and MTR is aware that while testing there might be a likelihood of signaling fault and outlining all the contingency planning and we're claiming to have a 90 person strong team now that you, you know it's coming and yet before Tuesday is the public even aware that MTR will conduct system testing and after this incident, do we have any uh, shuttle buses as in contingency planning? None. For the 90 person contingency team, what happened to them? This is a um, major incident with a concern across political uh, affiliations. I support Mr. Carey Fan's uh, um, request for urgent questioning. Mr. Al Lokhin, 
I hope that you can pay attention as for the last legislative session, the app that um the application to for all requesting have rejected twelve times. And so how do you feel on the power confer to the legislature? If you let's ask have to you shouldn't take too long for the members to press the button to uh, to ask one question. How and, and also had to do with a major mishap on the part of MTO and the government. And keep on chasing that why the reporting mechanism is not functioning properly. Frank Chen on RTHK said um all along that and uh, they discovered a the problem at four something and know that the phone is not working by five in the morning as a six they only disclose the information. So if there's such a problematic dissemination mechanism, why do we have given the chance to ask questions and let's go? Dr. Fernando Chung, I support Mr. Kerry Fan's request for me questioning according to uh, tw uh, Rules Procedure 244, if it's of an urgent character and relates to a matter of public importance, and the urgent question should be permitted. If the pro establishment members regarded this uh, for rail line paralysis is not considered urgent or not a matter of public importance, I'm so please veto it. Please don't get in the way um, to uphold our duty to hold government accountable. I don't want to see Mr. Andrew Leung and the pro establishment camp and uh, keep on getting in the way of large commandments to exercise their responsibility and rights, which is that when problem occurs that we have to get to the bottom of facts. Mr. Wichi Wai, I speak to support Mr. Kerry Fan's proposal to uh, for or request urgent questioning as uh, legislators as a matter of a great public concern, especially uh, where uh, the MGR railway lines, where four of them have uh, service disruption due to signaling fault and a, a huge mo which affected a huge majority of the commuting arrangements of the public. And the, the public would hope that um, the let's go through different channels to follow up on this and to conduct or questioning at the council meeting is simply a exercise some one part of the powers and and this is is exactly as important to uh, have in the transfer panel and a sub railway subcommittee i hope that um the um account there should be hopeful accountability which included questioning at the council meeting mr lo fan as for the mtr for railway paralysis of four railway lines have greatly impacted public so i think is we have to ask you urgent questions with government how would he get an accurate and comprehensive information as for the next uh, monday there's already the meeting on a subcommittee on matters related to railways before asking the government on the pen penalty mechanism we need to also question the government on the reporting mechanism would also need to ask the MCR on the contingency planning and for the review. And besides government officials present at the subcommittee, and it was arranged to have MTR representatives to attend a meeting to answer members' questions. I believe that it'd be more comprehensive and that only like two days apart anyway. Well, uh, which is about to uh, get to a uh, I get the whole picture in time. Um, Mr. Charles Smock, I support Mr. Kerry Fan's request to conduct an urgent oral question. And I can see that the MTR have uh, delivered many versions of the story of the incident. All as it had to do with the uh, uh, upgrade of the signal system, then um, the uh, narrative engulfed. However, um, it seems to be um, information overload. Um, when, tra when transmitting across different system, and some have been asking, is it a network issue, a um, aging system issue, or a hardware issue? I have received a lot of requests from the trade uh, to ask MTRCL and the government what is really going on, but not wait instead of waiting here for answers. 
on. So why do you so why do pro establishment afraid of uh, getting answers? If you don't want to ask a question, you and uh, you can forego your chance, but it's not uh, prevent other members to fulfill the duty in asking questions. If you feel it is useless, you can just feel free to sit here or go have lunch. Your time is up, Doctor Lowek Walk. Um, the president have decided uh, which in deciding uh, when to apply for uh, urgent questioning the guidelines were clear only where um, that it must for that matter to be must be asked in that council meeting for the past refusal does it mean that the electrical had to private other channels to follow up and and there are have been the, the relevant panels and the subcommittees can also pursue the, well so just to be fair so uh, as for uh, as for whether to approve or deny urgent questioning, it also depends on the wording of the question. And the members should order whether the wording can um, match to meet the threshold. And for the MTR railway paralysis, uh, uh, we only out factor carrying capacity to 20% of usual. But like Mr. Lockwell Frank said, we can have all the follow up. How uh, and if if the MTRC are not able to attend the meeting, then the meeting will be useless. Mr. Ben Chen. So in using up time for urgent questioning, I believe that this is important. However, this morning, we only had a meeting on the subcommittee on metro rail railways. A lot of members have asking Secretary Frank Chen and no satisfactory answer were given because a lot of the information must be provided by MTRCL to get a clear picture. Like Mr. Lockwalk Fan said, and the 24th, just two more working days, and the 29th is already the subcommittee meeting. And this morning, transfer panel, I said that the panel that day will invite MTRCL and the government reps to attend this meeting, and that it will be have a uh, item for discussion. I love the up discussing at the appropriate venue using the appropriate methods we only get the results we wanted. Finally, Mr. Chu Kachin. I support Mr. Kerry Fans and to um, bring all questioning. As a victim of the MTR paralysis, I would like to question the government and yet I'm not a member of the subcommittee and the member of the transport panel. So if you put it on under the panel and the subcommittee, would that be no room for me for you to participate? Chairperson. Well I since as a member for more than two years I no longer know what is what questioning. I'm well now I don't know what can constitute urgent. If this is not urgent, I'm ask the President, well, how? What do you mean? What define urgent? As for the, the, the according to the uh, guidelines, I want like to know that it is has written in the rules rather than the president's own interpretation. Now I have Mr. Kerry Fan to have a one minute response. Chairman, um, today's decision is important since all the system testing and system upgrading works will. Uh, persist for a long some some time. Like the MTR engineering staff said, there's still likelihood that they will uh, recur. And now that they will suspend the uh, works on Shima Line, as the government uh, oversight on the government, and if is not able to ask the government to come clean count within the shortest possible time, why there's no a free shuttle bus collected? Why uh, the eight minute delay? to report and, and while the other mass transportation system did not coordinate under transport department to provide um, a shuttle bus service to passengers. If we could not make this decision today, those who oppose the or questioning would need to bear the responsibility. If, if for the future occurrences they couldn't face the commenters uh, plagued by the MCR uh, mishaps. I heard from diverse opinions. I suppose we need a vote. Before you vote, and let me first respond to the viewpoints raised by the members. As for the uh, 
standards carried by Mr. President Liang in approving urgent questioning. I hope you can directly communicate with him. Of course, uh, those you can raise during house comp that we relate. I know that Mr. Andrew Liang had written to allow the justifications of approving or denying oral questioning. Well, for this year's uh, criteria, like Ms. Dr. Lowe said, he'd also need to consider that whether he must have a, a substantive impact if it had, had to be raised on the council meeting, otherwise he would enforce the rules strictly. Well, this year we also have the Chief Executive Q&A session, which we have other channels to pursue this. And all the members also mentioned that um, if the transfer panel and the subcommittee relate to railways, uh, and if you are not member, can you t join the meeting? And all the members, just depends on the local agenda, you can welcome to attend. I notice all the chairman uh, will arrange questioning from non-members and members. And regarding other voting results, I believe that this major incident, the members can have other channels to pursue this. So since we have diverse opinion, why don't we call for a division? Hi. Well, uh, please also remind uh, Dr. N. Zheng how she has misunderstood urgent questions um, nature. Well, I'll be dealing with it uh, in a fair manner. Uh, you have spoken for so long. Now we will put the matter to the vote. There will be a division. Uh, the bell will be rung for five minutes. Ms. Tanya Chen, you were making an interpretation about Dr. Lowe's uh, remarks. You talked about uh, the president's ruling. What about uh, ROP 24 bracket 4? It says that if a member asks the permission of the president to ask a question with no notice on the ground that it is of an urgent nature and relates to a matter of public importance, the president may permit the question to be asked without notice if he is satisfied that it is of that nature. I only see two conditions. Urgent. Second, matter of public importance. I don't find a third leg that is uh, if you don't ask at that meeting, there's no other opportunities. Well, I think um, you can take it up directly with Mr. Leung, the president. I think I've said that. Uh, I'm not in a position to confirm. Uh, I think uh, the debate is being... Uh, watched by the uh, public. So I've never uh, added anything. Uh, I also have time to express my views, right? So um, the bill will be run for uh, five minutes. Point of order, you can only talk about point of order. It is not time for a debate. What is your point of order, Dr. N. Zhang? Madam Chairman, I really hope that in relation to this issue, well, well, you can only raise a point of order. Have you found that some members never follow the rules of procedures? Let's not have a debate on it. They would just put forward their views and they would also engage in personal attacks. Well, if it is not a point of order, I'm sorry, I have to stop you. <laughs>
The wording of the uh, motion uh, has been put up on the screen. That is whether you agree to Mr. Fan's request to ask an urgent question. First of all, please press the white button to indicate your attendance, and then please uh, uh, cast your vote. Um, any questions before I close the voting? No questions. Voting is closed. The clerk, please um, show the result. 28 for, 26 against. No one abstains. I declare that the uh, proposal has been carried. Nothing under AOB. Meeting adjourned.